For the first time since the story emerged, CNN is hearing from the man who helped set up the meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and the Russian lawyer who claimed she had damaging information about Hillary Clinton. Emin Agalarov is a well-known pop star in Russia and parts of Eastern Europe. His representative was the eighth person at the Trump Jr. meeting. CNN's Matthew Chance caught up with Agalarov, and he joins us now from Jermala, Latvia. So, Matthew, tell, tell me about this encounter you had with him. Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's really difficult, Fred, to, to get anything of substance out of, uh, out of Amin Agalarov when it comes to the issue of why he set up this meeting between the Russian lawyer uh, and Donald Trump Jr. at Trump Tower uh, last June. That meeting has become uh, so controversial now. He's refused to go on the record sta stating why he set that meeting up. Uh, his lawyer, we've spoken to his lawyer in, in, in New York on a number of occasions, and they flatly rejected any of our attempts to sort of get, you know, a, a proper statement. And so we took this opportunity here in Latvia to, you know, track down Amin on the streets of Jamila, which is where we are now, and to put to him some of those questions that we want to get those answers to. Take a listen. Why did you arrange that meeting between Donald Trump Jr. Okay, and the guys. Russian lawyer? Come join me for the show tonight. Yeah, we will definitely. Excellent. Why did you? Any comments excellent, at all? Excellent, excellent, excellent. It's an important question to me. You know, the American public want to know. You guys. You know, whether the Trump can administration... A, can I have a drink, Yeah, of course you can. Without your presence? Thank, thank you very much. Can I just thank ask you. you, did the Russian authorities give your family information <laughs> yeah, to pass on, on to the Trump I administration? Talk to my lawyer. I've already talked to him. You said you wouldn't comment. So I wouldn't comment. But come on, these are, these are questions that you're not going to be able to not comment on at some point. Guys. You're going to have to answer them. I'm here to perform, yeah. to enjoy the show, and I'm not going to answer any questions. Why did your publicist Guys, say that you had information? I'm not going to answer any questions. I mean, you asked him about trying to get a comment. You're not going to get a comment. Am I clear? You're not going to get a comment. All right, I mean, Agalarov, pretty adamant there that he wasn't going to um, address that issue. But the fact is that these allegations of collusion and, of course, his involvement in it, allegedly, they're not going to go away. In fact, we understand, of course, that, uh, that Trump Jr. himself is going to be speaking to Congress about this very issue um, uh, in, the, in the coming days, potentially. And so, you know, this is all eventually, we expect, going to come out. Right, and there are going to be questions asked on Capitol Hill um, to Jerry Kushner as well, who was uh, part of that June 2016 meeting that was set up uh, that you were speaking um, to the entertainer about. So overall, how does the Kremlin view these mounting allegations over, you know, collusion uh, between Russia and the Trump campaign? What's their latest word on this? Well, I mean, I don't think their word has really, really changed. It hasn't really evolved that much, uh, except that, you know, I, I think there's a growing sense of frustration in the Kremlin. They thought Donald Trump was going to be the president that turned around the relationship between Washington and Moscow. Um, he promised to do that, of course, as we remember in his campaign. But because of how toxic the Russia issue has become in the United States, in domestic politics where you are, that's just not been possible. And the Kremlin is frustrated by this, and, and they want this situation to be stabilized. Fred. All right, Matthew Chance, uh, thanks so much for bringing that to us. They're from Latvia.